Hello everyone, it's Milker John. Today I am going to read S5 5086. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Robert Stevenson. Chapter 1 The Door. Mr. John Utterson was a lawyer and he lived in London. He seemed to be a cold man without feeling. He never smiled and he spoke only when it was necessary. But people liked him. There was something in his eyes that showed kindness. It showed his understanding of other people. Men and women came to him about the law, and he helped them all. It did not matter who they were. He lived a quiet and simple life. He enjoyed the theater, but he did not visit it anymore. His friends were people from his family, and very old friends from his old school. Then there was Mr. Enfield, the people could see no reason for Mr. Utterson and Mr. Richard Enfield to be friends. Mr. Enfield was quite different from Mr. Utterson. He was younger and enjoyed going to the theater, to parties and good restaurants. Why are they friends? People asked. What do they talk about when they, when they are together? And the reply was, if you see them on their Sunday walks, they never say anything. They don't seem to enjoy themselves. But the two men thought that the Sunday walks were an important part of the week. They enjoyed being together and they enjoyed the walks, but they were often silent walks. On one of the walks, the two men found themselves in a narrow street in one of the busier parts of London. It was a quiet street on a Sunday, but during the week, the little shops on each side were very busy. Because the shops were successful, they were clean <coughs> and brightly painted. The road was clean. It was a pleasant street to walk along. Near one end of the street, there was a break in the line of shop. There was a narrow entrance to a courtyard. Next to it was a windowless end of a tall, dark, ugly house. The door in this wall was unpainted and needed repair. Old men sometimes slept in the doorway. Small boys sometimes played on the steps and wrote their names on the door with their pocket knives. Mr. Enfield and the lawyer were on the other side of the street. But Mr. Enfield pointed to it with his walking stick. Have you ever noticed that door before John? He asked. Yes, ugly, isn't it? replied Mr. Utterson. Every time I pass it, said Mr. Enfield, I think about a day last winter. A very strange thing happened. Oh, said Mr. Ellison, what was it? Chapter 2, Mr. Enfield's story. One dark morning, I was on my way home at about 3 o'clock. At first, I walked a very long way without seeing anyone. Everybody was asleep. Street lights were lit, but the street was empty and silent. Suddenly, I saw two people. One was a little man who was walking quickly towards the street corner. There was a little girl. She was about eight or nine years old. I think she was running as quickly as she could towards the same corner. Naturally, she ran into the little man. Then I saw something terrible. The girl fell down, and this man, calmly me, walked on her. He stepped on her body. She cried out, of course, but he didn't stop or turn around. He just walked away. He wasn't acting like a man, more like a mindless machine. Then the girl started screaming. I shouted and ran after the man, at last I cut him by the neck and brought him back. Already there was a group of people uh, around the crown child, her family, and some of her neighbor. Get a doctor, said somebody, and one of the neighbors hurried away. It was quite calm, the man who stepped on the child. He didn't try to escape, but he looked at me once, and my blood ran cold. I hated him. People around the girl was joined by the doctor. The girl was not hurt very much, only frightened her really, the doctor said, but there was something very unusual about it all. I felt an immediate hate for the man that I was holding. The child's family hated him too. That was natural, but the doctor was not like us. He was the usual cold, calm, scientific man, but every time he looked at the man, I saw him turn sick and white. He wants to kill him too, I thought. I understood what was in the doctor's mind. He looked at me. He knew what was in mine. We can't kill the man even if we want to, we agreed. But we promised to make as much trouble for him as we could. We'll tell all our friends about this. We told the man. 
Everyone in London will hear about it. And, uh, and all the time we were keeping the women away from him. They were wild and dangerous because they were so angry. I never saw so many hate-filled faces. And there was a man in the middle. He was frightened, but he smiled, an ugly smile, and did not move. If your money is sad, uh, tell me nobody wants trouble with people like you. He told him to give a hundred pounds to the child and her family. He didn't want to agree to this, but the little crowd around him looked dangerous, and at last he said, uh, all right, I'll pay. Next, he, we had to get the money, and where do you think he took us? To that ugly place with the door, he pulled the key out of his pocket, unlocked the door, and went in. We waited outside after the time he came out with the 10 pounds in money, and a check for the rest. The check was signed, and the signature surprised me. It was the name of a famous man. I can't tell you the name, but you probably know it all, know it well. I don't like this, I said. You walk through a door like that at 4 o'clock in the morning and come out of it with another man's check for nearly a 100 pounds? It's very unusual. He smiled his ugly smile again and answered, You don't need to worry. I'll stay with you until the banks open. Then I'll get the money with the, with the check. The child's father, the man, and I went to my house. We waited there until the morning. After breakfast, we all went to the bank together with the check and the bank paid the money without question. Chapter 3, The Check Mr. Allison looked shocked. Oh dear! That's a terrible story. Yes, I agree, said Mr. Enfield. It's a shocking story. Nobody would like the unpleasant man who hurt the girl, but another man signed the check. And he is exactly the opposite of a really fine, honest man and very famous for his good work. What's the name of the man who walked over the child, said Mr. Allison. His name is Mr. Hyde, said Mr. Enfield. And the man who signed the check? Does he live in that house? asked Mr. Utterson. Do you know? Beyond that door, Mr. Fitzgerald? <coughs> no, he doesn't. His house is in a square, but I don't remember the name of the square. The place beyond the door doesn't really seem like a house. There are three windows on the first floor of the courtyard. They are always shut, but they are clean. Somebody lives there, but the houses are all near together around the courtyard. You can't be sure how many, how many there are. There doesn't seem to be another door, and nobody uses the door that I showed you, except the man that I have told you about. Mr. Orison walked in silence. It was clear that he was thinking. At last, he said, Are you sure that he used the key? Mr. Uh, uh, Enfield was clearly a surprise. Well, he began. The lawyer continued, I'm sorry, it must have seemed a strange question, but there is a reason for it. I already know the name of the man who signed the check. Chapter 4. Who is Mr. Hyde? That evening, Mr. Utterson ate his dinner without much interest. was not really hungry. There was too much on his mind. After dinner, he usually read a book until midnight. And then went to bed. But that night, he took a light and went into his office. There he opened the safe, took out an envelope. Uh, on it, what it was, Dr. Zekiel's will. He sat down and began to read the will with a worried look on his face. The will was in Dr. Jekyll's writing. Mr. Utterson refused to help the doctor when he wrote it. The lawyer had to keep it for the doctor. It was his job, but he did not like the will. The will was clear. If Henry Jekyll dies, his house and all his money passes into the hands of his friend and helper, Edward Hyde. And if Dr. Jekyll disappears for three months, the same Edward Hyde will own everything immediately. The lawyer disliked this will. He did not like it as a lawyer. It made him angry as a person. He liked the people to do things in an ordinary way. My dislike was very strong when Hyde was on your name, he said to himself. Now I know some very unpleasant things about the man with that name and it makes it worse. I thought that Jekyll was mad. Now I'm beginning to think he's afraid after some time. He put the will back into his safe. And he put on a coat and hat, went out into the cold night, went to the Cavendish Square to visit his friend, the famous Dr. De Lanyon. If someone knows something about this, it is Lanyon, he thought. He soon reached Cavendish Square and his friend's house. Dr. Lanyon, the servant, was glad to see Mr. Utterson and took the lawyer straight to the dining room. Dr. Lanyon was finishing the dinner. The doctor was a happy, healthy man with a red face. When he saw Mr. Utterson, he jumped up. 
Oh, it's good to see you, Otterson, he said. Sit down and make yourself comfortable. They always enjoyed their visit. After a little general talk, the lawyer spoke about Dr. Zikil. You and I, Alenian, are surely hand to kill two oldest friends. It's a pity that the friends are not younger, said Dr. Lenyon, smiling. But yes, we probably are his oldest friend, but I don't see him very often now. Oh, is that right? I'm surprised to hear it, said Mr. Addison. I thought that you were both interested in the same scientific work. We were, Dr. Lenyon replied, but then Henry Jekyll began to have some strange ideas. I just said I could not agree with. It began to go wrong, but that's my opinion. How? Wrong in the mind, I think. Of course, I'm still in. I'm still interested in him. Addison waited for a minute, then asked, "Did you ever meet a man that he knows? A man with the name of Hyde? Hyde? No, I never heard Henry Jekyll say that name. That was all the information that Mr. Addison went home with that evening. But Enfield's story did not leave his mind." Uh, he couldn't stop thinking about it, and he slept badly that night. I must see this Mr. Hyde, he thought. I must see this man that Enfield hates to so strongly. The man seems to have power of Henry Jekyll. Perhaps that, then I shall understand the mystery of Dr. Jekyll's will. From the day Miss Addison began to watch the door in the street of uh, little shops when he had time, he watched it in the morning before he went to his office. He watched at lunchtime when the street was busy. He watched again at night under the moonlight. He was a patient man. And at last, about 10 o'clock one cold night, he heard some quick steps coming towards the door. Mr. Utterson stepped into the entrance to the courtyard. The man walked quickly round the corner. He was a small and was dressed in very plain clothes. Utterson could not see the man's face clearly, but he still felt a strong dislike for him. The man walked straight towards the door and took a key from his pocket. Mr. Utterson moved out and touched him on the shoulder. Mr. Hyde, I think, he said. Mr. Hyde moved a step away, but if he was afraid, his fear quickly disappeared. He didn't look at the lawyer's face, but he said, quite coldly, this is my name, what do you want? I see that you are going in, the lawyer answered. I'm an old friend of Dr. Jekyll. I'm sure that you have heard my name, Mr. Addison of the Gun Street. Perhaps you will save my tired defeat and give me your permission to go in with you through the this door. You won't find Dr. Jekyll at home, replied Mr. Hyde. He's out, and then suddenly, but still without looking up, he said, How did you know me? Before I answer your question, will you do something for me? said Addison. Of course, said the other man. Can I see your face? said Utterson. Mr. Hyde seemed to think for a minute, then he turned round and looked straight at Mr. Utterson. Thank you. Now I will know you again. Yes, and uh, you can have my address too. And he gave Utterson a card with an address in Soho. Mr. Utterson was surprised. Why did he give me his address? he thought. Is he thinking of Henry Jekyll's will? He did not show what he was feeling. He put the card in his pocket and said, uh, thank you. And now I will repeat my question, said Hyde. How did you know me? By description. Who described me, said Hyde. Mr. Addison thought quickly. There are people who know both of us, he said. Who are they? Jekyll is one. He didn't tell you about me, cried Mr. Hyde angrily. Don't lie. Moving quickly, he went to the door. He unlocked it and disappeared into the house. Mr. Addison stood for a minute. Then he walked slowly away, turning a problem over in his mind. Mr. Hyde was pale and small, and he had an ugly smile. He spoke to the lawyer in a soft, uh, broken voice, mixing the politeness and rudeness, but this was not an important matter. They did not explain the feeling of hate and fear that Mr. Addison had. There was something more. The lawyer could not find a name for it. There's something about the man, some terrible evil, he thought. My poor Henry Jekyll, there is evil in the face of your new friend. Around the corner at the end of the street of small shops, there was a square of old houses. There were nearly all flats and offices now. Uh, but one house, the second from the corner, was still owned by one person. Mr. Addison went to the door of his house and knocked. 
Well, just all seven open the door. The doctor to kill at home. Pull at the lawyer. I will go and see Mr. Anderson. Come in. He showed the lawyer into the large room and pointed to a big chair. Would you like to sit there, sir? I won't be long. Thank you, said Mr. Anderson. He liked watching in this room. He usually thought uh, how pleasant it was, but tonight he could not forget the face of Mr. Hyde. It seemed to be in every corner of the room, in every moving light that burned in the fireplace. Mr. Anderson was worried and afraid. He said and thought, he did not know what to say to his friend. The pool came back. Mr. Anderson was really quite glad. When he said, Dr. Jekyll has gone out, sir. I saw Mr. Hyde go in by the old workroom door, Paul. Is that all right when Dr. Jekyll is out? Yes, it is usual, sir. The servant replied, are you sure? Yes. Mr. Hyde has a key, does he? Dr. Jekyll seems to trust that young man, Paul. Yes, sir, he does, said Paul. Dr. Zekiel has told us to take orders from Mr. Hyde. When he's not here, Mr. Hyde takes his place. I don't think I have ever met Mr. Hyde here, said Mr. Utterson. Oh, no, sir, he never comes to dinner here, replied the servant. In fact, we don't often see him in this house. He usually comes and goes through the workroom. They were silent for a minute or two then, Mr. Utterson said. Good night, Paul. <clears throat> Good night, Mr. Utterson. The lawyer started to walk home. He was very sad as he thought about his friend. For Henry Jekyll, he thought, I'm afraid that he's in some sort of trouble. It was quite wild when he was, uh, when he was a young man. Had something come back from the past to this one now? I hope not. So Hyde was free to come and go in Jekyll's house. But they worried Utterson if the evil man learned about the will. Perhaps he will want to hurry Jekyll's death or help him to disappear, then he will be able to enjoy the things that Jekyll owns now. I must do something about it if Jekyll will let me, if he will let me. Chapter 5. After dinner, <clears throat> uh, Mr. Utterson was very glad when about two weeks later, Dr. Jekyll gave one of his pleasant dinner parties for five or six old friends. They were all intelligent men and they were all they all enjoyed good conversation and fine wine, so they were happy to come to the doctor's house. And as usual, the lawyer stayed after the, the others went home. Mr. Utterson and Dr. Jekyll sat together, one on each side of the fireplace. I wanted to speak to you, Jekyll. Utterson began. Oh, said the doctor, what about? About your will, said the lawyer. Clear that the doctor did not like the subject, but he smiled. My poor person, I'm very sorry that it worries you. You worry more than anyone, oh, except Lanyon. He seems worried about my scientific work, but he's a good man. I like you. You know that I never liked that will. He refused to talk about other things. Well, I know that. He told me. Well, I'll tell you again. <clears throat> and I have learned something about Hyde. <clears throat> Dr. Jekyll's face went pale. I don't want to listen, he said. I heard a very bad thing, said Utterson. It doesn't change anything. It must, said Utterson. I'm sorry, but you don't understand, Utterson. It's a very strange business, very strange. It won't become better if we talk about it. There's nothing more to say about, about it. Henry, you know me. You know that you can trust me. Tell me all about it. I'm sure I can get you out of trouble. You are a really good man, Utterson, the doctor said. I can't find words to thank you. I trust you more than any other person. But it isn't what you think. I can tell you one thing. When I want to, I can be free of... I can be free of Hyde. Mr. Utterson started to speak, but Jekyll stopped him. You should know something, said Jekyll. I am very interested in poor Hyde. I know that you have seen him. He told me that. And I'm afraid that he was not polite, but I do take great interest in that young man. I want to ask you uh, to do what is right. Help him to get things that are in my way. Can you give me that promise? It's very important to me. I can say that I will ever like him. I don't ask for that. You're my best friend. I only want you to help him when I die. Orison looked very unhappy, but at last he said, All right, I promise. 
chapter six, the, the Karu murder. Nearly a year later, in 1880, there was a terrible crime in a London street. Everyone in London was just shocked when they heard about it. A young woman, servant, saw it happen. She lived alone in a house not far from the river. At about 11 o'clock on the night of the crime, she went up to her room. She sat on a chair near the window and looked out the moonlight street. She was a romantic young woman and she had begun to think about love. After a minute, she noticed an old man with white hair coming along the narrow street below her window. Then she saw another very small man going along the street the opposite way. This man carried a heavy stick in his hand. When the two men were quite close, the old man stopped. He seemed to ask the small man a polite question. The girl saw him pointing. She thought that he was asking the way the moon shone on old man's kind face. As he spoke, the girl looked at the other man. To a surprise, she knew his face. He was a man, Mr. Hyde, who once visited her employer. She remembered feeling a strong dislike for him at the time. Turned it, this Mr. Hyde became crazy with anger. He waved his stick and started shouting. The old man looked very surprised. He took a step back. Mr. Hyde really went mad like a wild animal. He led his old man over the pair with his stick and knocked him to the ground. Then he jumped on the old man's body and hit him again and again with the heavy stick. He did not stop until the old man was dead. This terrible thing was too much for the girl. She fell to the floor. Her eyes closed and for some time she knew nothing. It was two o'clock before the girl opened her eyes again. When she remembered the murder, she immediately called the police. Murder was not there, of course, but the murdered man was still underground in the middle of the narrow street. The heavy stick was broken and one half of it lay near the body. The police looked in the murdered man's pocket and found some money and a gold watch. There was also a letter ready to post. The envelope had Mr. Addison's name and address on it. The police inspector brought the letter to the lawyer just before 9 o'clock in the morning. He told Mr. Addison about the crime. Mr. Addison listened carefully. Then he said, this is a very serious matter, but I don't want to say anything until I see the body. I'll take you now, said the police inspector, but he was at the police station. When Mr. Addison saw it, he said, yes, I know him. This is the body of Sir Danvers Carew. Really, sir? He's a very famous man. Police inspector thinking, yes, and perhaps I'll be famous too if I catch the murderer. Yes, said Addison. Sir Danvers was very famous. Perhaps you will be able to help us in our search for the killer. Sure, the police inspector said. He told Addison what the girl was so. Mr. Addison was worried when he heard the name of Mr. Hyde. So the broken snack, sick, and near it immediately. I gave it to Henry to kill personally many years ago. But he said nothing. A police inspector was waiting for Mr. Addison to say something. So the lawyer asked, Is this Mr. Hyde a small man? Yes. Very small and very evil looking, the servant girl said. Mr. Addison thought for a moment, then he said, Come with me. I think that I can take you to his house, uh, the end.